Okay, I'm just gonna draw something for you guys so you guys can better understand what I'm talking about. Okay, this is not working out. What the heck? What? I used to be so good at drawing. What the heck happened? That's a poop. This is what I need. Okay, this is this is what we're gonna go with. Yeah. This is it. Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about butt wings. Let's just jump right into it. Some people don't know what butt wings are. Some aren't even aware of them. Some have already created an opinion about them without having any facts to back their statement up. So for those who don't know, butt wings is basically something that you see mostly when you are performing a squat, when you get to the lower level of the squat or most likely when you go below parallel on your squat, you will see that your hips are kind of moving or your butt is kind of moving, which is creating like a little butt wink when you go down. And you will especially see butt wings when you go ass to the grass, but for some they don't even have to go that low, it all depends on their mobility in their hips. So butt wink is basically when you create a posterior pelvic tilt, so it's basically when your tailbone is winging underneath and you're creating more of a rounded uh, lumbar spine. So basically to round it up, if you squat ass to the grass or for some they don't even have to go that low, you create a or you provoke a butt wink which creates more of a posterior pelvic tilt which can result in lumbar spine flexion. <laughs> But here is the thing, is it really that bad? Is butt wink really that bad? And is limber spine flexion or limber flexion really bad? You might have heard before, oh you can't do butt wings, but because of what? They never really back up any facts with their statement. So let's go ahead and break it down. So this is where many opinions come in and basically the discussions about if this movement really is safe. So some research has shown that limber flexion can result in some lower back pain or in worst cases be a injury mechanism for this herniation. So for those who don't know what this herniation is, it's basically it occurs when the soft center of a spinal disc pushes through a crack in the tougher exterior casing of the spine. I will insert a picture so you know what I'm talking about and know what I'm trying to explain for you to understand better. And this can lead to discomfort, of course, pain, numbness, and nerve irritation. However, when this is even said, uh, limber flexion and disc herniation doesn't even have to be on the same radar. Exercises like this, stiff leg, deadlift, squats, kettlebell swings, pistol squats, but especially squats squats itself shows that a neutral spine doesn't just have to be a position, doesn't just have to be a hold or just like a setup, but a neutral spine could actually be a range, but to a certain degree, but I'll get into that. So as long as you keep a good neutral spine, there is room for some movement, especially when you go down on the eccentric movement of your squats, there is room for your hips to move as well and still maintain a good neutral spine. So that has been found that this small amount of movement in your hips when you go down uh, on the squat is almost unavoidable. Especially if you have a really good form on your squat, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you really go below parallel, but I'm not gonna break down the squat right now. I will save that for another video, so let me know if you want that. So with that said, when we say this movement of the butt wink, it's only to a certain degree. So how much butt wink is too much butt wink? As I already mentioned, uh, a neutral spine could be a range, but how much does the range expand for it to be bad? How much limber flexion can we take for it to be bad? Okay, 
Okay, so I just had to reset because I got this whiteboard. Let me just draw something for you, for you to understand better. I could just insert a picture, but I feel like this is more fun. So, this is so as long as your spine is still safe and neutral, even with a little bit of tilt at the end, you should not be worrying about uh, your butt wing at all. So, okay, just to draw two pictures. This is what I drew. Okay, the ring light is coming in the way. Alright, don't mind the ring light, but... So this is like a natural low squat but with a butt wing but you see how the spine is still neutral as in this one is more forced production so as you can see this is not good this is like a really bad posterior pelvic tilt and the limber spine is probably in really bad flexion and this is overall a really bad movement you can kind of see on my drawing is not perfect okay let's insert a picture as you can see in the picture this is really more about bad form and good form mobility also comes into play but as you can see you can still have a neutral spine even when you have a little bit of butt wink or a little bit of tilt at the end and it won't be bad for your squat and you won't get hurt either so what really happens when you butt wink with your body it's basically when your pelvis let me insert a picture right here so you can see when you go down on the eccentric movement your hips kind of runs out of space and your pelvis therefore hit the barrier and then move accordingly in order for you to go below parallel on your squat <laughs> So here is what you can do about the butt wink, is that you basically don't go ass to the grass on all of your squats. As long as you go below parallel, you will still get all of the benefits from doing this movement and you will still be just fine. But don't go so deep that you lose the tension and you kind of like force positioning with trying to go ass to the grass. That's basically what I have for you today about butt wings. This is just the surface. You can break this down so much more, like so, so much more. And so much is up for discussion as well. But I hope this made you understand more about butt wings. Is it good? Is it bad? It's like in between, honestly. As long as you know what you're doing and know the proper squat form, know how to keep your spine neutral, you'll be fine with a little bit of movement. And as I already explained, it is almost unavoidable for your hips to tilt a little bit when you go down on your squat. It also all depends on your positioning of your squat, your mobility. Squats can be done so differently. It also depends if you do goblet squats, front squats, back squats, a high bar, low bar, and whatnot. But I really hope that this helped you understand better about butt wings and just to end it, don't freak out just because there's a little bit of movement in your hips. It's okay. It's okay for it to be there, but all I'm saying is be careful and do your research. Maybe if you're new to the gym, get somebody to spot you that are more familiar with this topic. But yeah, that's basically it, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did. And if you want to watch more videos like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And I'll see you guys in my next video.